the real Coos Pearl Arbor style that we had pulled was pulled off by Jim Neidhart of Neidhart's Raiders just last week, as a matter of fact, on Championship Wrestling. And let me show you a little recap of exactly what he did to Austin Idol. Something else. Let's take a look. Look out! Oh, Whoa, this time, Lawler moves out of the way of the block, and it's the referee that gets hit. Poor Jerry Calhoun. He takes one of those Oakland Raiders' shoulders. Ooh. Oh, Lawler! A... Screaming and moaning about the chair. Yeah, Lawler used the chair, no doubt about it. Now Lawler has gone and Neidhart remains. He's hollering and screaming, saying, he says he's not leaving. Hey. Jim. Just, hey, come on, get out of here. Just take it on in the back. Now, you lost the match and just take it on the back. Will you please? Come on. It's all over with. The match is done. Well, you can sit there, but we're going to take a break. With an important match coming up with Randy Macho Man Savage. And Austin, you've got an important match coming up with uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. Uh, it's pretty hard to ignore the big noise up there. Extremely hard to ignore. Yeah. But you've got a match coming up with... Excuse me, man. You know, I, I think what... I'd like to say something directly to this jerk, okay, if I can. Excuse me, Lance. I don't want to apologize to the rest of the television viewing audience. You know what your problem is, I think, uh, Nightheart? I think your whole problem is, is that you are a habitual loser. I think that's your main problem, jerk. You were a loser when you were involved in the anvil throw. You were a loser when you played professional football. That's why there's no longer playing football today. And to make it a little bit sweeter than that, you are a loser in professional wrestling, jerk. Now, if you think what just happened to you was bad then, if you mess with me, darling, you'll find out what a real losing battle can be. Now, well, let's just go ahead and conduct this interview. Man. Gave you a pretty good idea exactly what happened in there. Idol uh, was talking with me, and Neidhart jumped him from behind when he uh, came up. Here comes Jim Neidhart of the Neidhart Ring. Uh, 
just a minute. Just a minute. You said that I jumped him from behind. I ambushed him. Did you say that? What I said. He was talking with me. The anvil doesn't ever have to go behind anybody's back. I face my opponents nose to nose, face to face. I don't have to go behind anybody's back or ambush anybody. Let me tell you something, Austin Idol. We don't have to wait for any scheduled match, baby. Why don't you and me get it on right here and now, huh, baby? Oh, ah, right now, baby. Uh, oh, Idol is not here, but I do have oh, a video. he's not here, huh? Well, he's not here today, and I've got a videotape that he had some words to talk to you about, because, brother, he is going to be hot the next time he meets with you. Let's take a look at Austin oh, Idol. Right here. Oh, I, uh, Thanks, Lance. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I want to say uh, I want to apologize, that is, to all the, the fans uh, in the area for my absence at the matches. As you can see, that I suffered a fractured nose, uh, a broken nose, that is, at the hands of one Jim Neidhart. Um, they're, they're, I wish I could just sit here and, and say to you that I feel 100 percent. If I was to say that, it would be a blatant lie. Unfortunately, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not at full capacity, but I want to relay a, uh, a message to the fans uh, and to you, Nightheart, that uh, I'm going to show up for my match with you, uh, and I just, I just hope and, I just hope and pray that I can muster up enough strength and endurance to fight you the way I want to fight you. And I want you to remember one thing, Nightheart. It's not my intention to pin your shoulders to the mat because. I could care less about that. I have one thing in mind and only one thing in mind. It's my intention to hurt you like you hurt me. And I want you to remember that. I'm going to hurt you. Yeah, he's hurt a lot of people. My goodness! My goodness! Austin, I, you're scaring me to death, baby. You know, I, I don't like these little head games that uh, you're playing with me, baby. I don't like it at all. It's when I play with the Oakland Raiders. And I got injured here. My elbow, I got my elbow dislocated. You didn't hear the anvil going around crying and not showing up. Then when I got injured, I got on the field and I played anyway. And when I was a track star at UCLA, I got bone chips on this elbow. And did you see Jim Knight on the anvil? Did you see him on the sidelines sipping coke and eating popcorn and watching the track beat? No! Baby, I was right in the middle of things, throwing the shot and being the best in the NCAA with an injury, baby. The NFL plays with injuries. Let me tell you something, Austin Idol. I'll tell you, if I had you in my hands right now, I'd pull every one of those little bleach blonde hairs right out of your head. And then I'd grab your neck. And I hit the bam once in the nose, just for good luck. And then bam once in the eye. And then I get you on the neck, and I pull you down. I pull you down the floor. And I bam, and I bam, and I bam, and I bam. Right in that cute little nose of yours. I don't, that's what I do to you, baby. Because I love to put pain on you. How sweet it is! How sweet it is, baby! You look good. Yeah, or something else. I gotta take you. Give me the microphone back in here, please. Because, hey! Uh, what? Don't ever, ever yell at the anvil. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just simply saying you had all the things that you want to say, and I think we've given you ample time out here to take care of all the things that you got to say. Ample time! The anvil should be on the whole show! I should have a whole hour out here! Listen, I don't... Yeah. I 
so I showed you what he's serious about it, brother. Did you see that? Right. Did you see him ambush me? Yep. Did you see it? Uh, nobody but nobody bushwhacks the animals and get away with it, baby. I'm going to take that board and stick it right in the back. Nobody gets away with it. Nobody. 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 And the beat goes on, I guess we could say. We're going to take time out and get rid of some of this uh, board and get things back in shape, and we'll be back with action in the ring in just a moment. Rick Rude and Angel coming right out here to get ready to go in the They're just expressing their opinions. I heard you. They got no taste at all, but they're just expressing their preference in there. Rick Rude. Okay, uh, Dave, let's have the introductions on this one. One fall, 15-minute time limit from Liverpool, England, 222 pounds, Scott Shannon. And going against him from Beverly Hills, California, his Valley Angel in his corner, Rick Rude at 232 pounds. One fall, 15-minute time limit match, and the referee is Jerry Calhoun. Okay, referee says, bring it, we will do. And Angel's got to hop right on out of there, and Scott Shannon will be facing uh, the much taller Rick Rude. Rude up there flashing his muscles. He sees somebody that he's got a couple of inches of height advantage on, and right away he's thinking, oh, this guy's a pushover. Goes around behind waist lock, and Scott Shannon works his way out. He's got another thing coming with Shannon, I'll tell you that. Well, I'll tell you what, we've seen Shannon uh, many times in the last uh, couple of months, and the young man can take care of himself in the ring. He's doing it right now against Rick Rude. He had Rude waist locked and held him till Rude got over to the ropes. Now, Rude can wrestle. There's no doubt about it. He's got all the tools in the world except a lousy attitude. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he's got plenty of height on him. Rude's about 6'2", 6'3", somewhere in there. He's got great weight, and, of course, there's no denying the muscular development. Comes in behind with a hammer lock. And he's got Angel, who uh, has found herself being of assistance in the last few weeks. And she is uh, banged away with those high heels and everything else. So Rude has got a lot going for him, but he's going to need a lot today with Scott Shannon. Shannon takes the arm up behind. Rude trying to get a hold of the hair. They're backed into the rope. What is this? That's just what we were talking about. Angel slaps him upside the uh, leg in there saying you're doing bad things to Rick Ruth. But distraction for Scott Chan yeah, who can't really. concentrate on uh, on the business of and that being Rick Rude. Tied up going to the side headlock. Shannon, you can see in a slight disadvantage with the height that Rude has trying to get that side headlock. Hey, reverse me. Can this gentleman from Liverpool go, or can he go? Rick Rude griping to the referee. What's he griping about? Just a beautiful reversal by Scott Shannon. What a dandy. Rude rips him across the face and bangs him with that forearm. Knee to the midsection. Now Rude's coming on strong. Shannon takes the right hand. The referee warns him about the fist. Oh, back drop, and he had right square on his back there as he, uh, as he took the mat. Angel up on the ring apron. She better get out from there. Rick Rude all around the top rope, and Scott Shannon catches him with his knee, Dave. Caught him flying off of there. Now he goes to work on him. Forearm uppercut. Whip across the ring. Look at Shannon go. Uh-oh. Stopped him cold as he looked in the eye. Reversal by Shannon. Shannon on the second rope. Good one. Great. Uh-oh. Angel's in the ring. 
gets up there, the referee, he's going to disqualify Reed. Yeah. yeah. Good shot. He's going to be the ring. Disqualification as Angel jumped in the ring. He was in a process of counting. Rude had his feet ready to kick out, but Angel jumped in there. Woohoo! He picks Angel up. He's hollering at her. What are you doing? I wasn't meeting. What are you doing jumping in the ring? Now he's going over there and, and getting at the uh, Doug Gilbert, Eddie's brother. Is over there taking pictures, and uh, that's, that's no excuse in kicking. You What's lose a match. Here? It's not his you fault, it's her fault. No pictures of me. Shut up. Don't Don't I off that's, Eddie Gilbert. Off my back. that's Eddie Gilbert's brother, and Eddie will be out of words to say that. I'll talk to Eddie Gilbert. No more pictures of me, punk. You hear that? Yeah, I hear what you I say. don't authorize them. They don't take them. Rick Rude, in his typical charming manner, comes up here. He gets beat in the match. Because and now he's still hollering at Angel out here. He picked her out. I thought he's going to throw her right out of the ring there. Yeah, too. He was upset. What, what was the time on it? Time on it was uh, three minutes, 21 seconds. Win for Scott Shannon by disqualification. Mm, boy, I'll tell you what. And the fire was coming out of Rick Rude's mm -hmm. eyes after that. Dougie, we're sorry about that. Uh, there he jumped over and was complaining about his picture being taken. I didn't authorize him and all that stuff. We got more action. We're going to be back to it in just a moment. <laughs> Remind you that tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock on TV5, the King is going to have a show on. He'll have the new generation. I'm going to talk to them. Ron Nikolajic of the Showboats. And boy, what a job that offensive line did last night with Mike Kelly. You'll have Ron on your show tomorrow. And uh, of course, to, uh, everything can be good. The new generation, Ron Mikulajic, tomorrow morning at 11, but you also got Randy Savage on there, so what can I say? Well, you know, you got to take the good with the bad, so uh, anyway, it's going to be a good show. I'm looking forward to it, but what about this, Lance? Hey, you haven't said anything. Just getting around the sand. You notice what's around his arm. Right. The Southern Heavyweight Belt. Jerry Lawler's Southern Heavyweight Belt. Don't say a word. Let me show him how you got it. <laughs> Let's take a look with about with you, Mother. First thing he goes for is that mask. I'll tell you, go ahead and touch me, no charge. <laughs> He's got the belt back, and I'll tell you, well done, my friend, well done. Well, you know, uh, you just get away from one jerk like that. You know, you finish off a guy like Humongous, uh, and then uh, we get rid of Hart. He's out of everybody's hair, and uh, along comes King somebody else. King Kong Bundy. King That's Kong nice. Bundy, can you, you believe it? it? Hey, you've just gotten rid of one of the toughest guys I've ever seen in Humongous, and now you come against a guy who is even bigger. Than, uh, than humongous. Oh, he's a lot bigger. Now, have you ever uh, seen this guy in person? Believe no, I've me, never seen he, him in person. He is, he is big, believe me. And uh, the strange thing about it, though, is that King Kong Bundy, uh, currently, I thought, you know, was wrestling in Atlanta, well, all over the country. I thought he was a big fan favorite, but all of a sudden I get word that he wants to challenge me for the Southern title. But then again, uh, everybody wants to be champion. Well, when you get into sure. wrestling, you know, you want to be the best, and this signifies that. 
and so uh, I can understand the challenge from King Kong Bundy. But what I'm looking forward to is the fact that uh, uh, I think it'll be a good, clean, scientific wrestling match if the guy can wrestle. As I said, he's big and he's strong and he's Ooh. never been body slammed. So uh, it's a challenge, Lance, that I'm kind of looking forward to. And I understand we got some words from King Kong yeah, Bundy. Yeah, King Kong Bundy sent in an interview as we asked him to, and, and we do have it. So if we can run it right now, let's take a listen to King Kong Bundy. Well, hello, Jerry Lawler. Hey, surprise, surprise, surprise. You know, I bet you thought you'd probably never see Jimmy Hart again. You know, I bet you thought that Jimmy Hart was probably sitting at home crying his eyes out over about the little scheme that you and Eddie Marlin cooked up to get rid of Jimmy Hart. Well, baby, you're wrong. You know, I mean, there's no way that Neidhart could have thought of that whole idea because he's a jock and he's too stupid because you know how dumb football players are, man, huh? But it was you and Eddie Marlin, that old poor lame brain Eddie Marlin, and mostly you, Lawler, because I have to admit, you are a little bit smarter than Eddie, and that's not saying very much. But let me tell you something, buddy. You know, when I was in the music business with the Gentries, we had gold records, and then we hit the bottom, and everybody said, hey, we're going to walk out on Jimmy Hart because we'll never have another hit as the Gentries. But what did Jimmy Hart do? He put a little pencil and paper down, baby, and I wrote me a million seller that I wrote, Why Should I Cry? And then Cinnamon Girl, and all of a sudden, baby, the Gentries were back on top. And then there was professional wrestling. I left music to go to professional wrestling. And I started out and everybody probably said, hey, Hart will never make it. But look, I've managed some of the biggest names in the history of professional wrestling. You know it, I know it, and the people know it. And I've had my ups and downs. But now I've got to rebuild and start all over again and work my way back to the top. And you know whose fault that is? Your fault, Jerry Lawler. And you know what? You've cost me a lot of money. I've had to fly to a lot of places over the last couple of weeks. You know, I've been to Chicago. I've been to Kansas City, Missouri, New York City, San Juan, Puerto Rico. You like my tan king? Because I spent a little time in San Juan looking for some people. But then all of a sudden, baby, I went to Atlanta, Georgia. And you know, in Atlanta, Georgia, I found something special down there. The biggest professional athlete I've ever seen in my life. The biggest wrestler I've ever seen in my life. And also, man, somebody that's an international star. And I realized something else, baby that money talks and BS walks. And you know what I've got in here? I've got a quite a bit of money. Let me tell you something, King. If it's the last thing that Jimmy Hart does, I will stand in the ring in the Coliseum of Memphis, Tennessee over your lame body, and I will say it's the greatest lay of my life. Because you see, Jim Croce wrote a little song one time. You know what it said? It said, you don't tug on Superman's cape. You don't spit in the wind. You don't pull the mask off a Long Ranger, and you don't mess around with Jim. Hope you like this. Wait a minute, don't... Jimmy Hart, back again. Don't get upset. Don't get down. Don't uh, get worried about the king, Lance. Yeah. Believe me. Now, we heard a lot of talk, and we saw two big mouths running there. But are you upset? Are you scared? Uh, I'm upset. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be. You're not gonna, even going to be in the ring with him. I'm the one that's going to be in the ring with him, Lance. And I'm not upset. You know, I'm really glad. I'm really glad that I saw that interview because, you know... I had a lot of things that I could have said about King Kong Bundy, but I thought that he was a fan favorite, and I thought that he was going to abide by all the rules. I thought it was going to be a clean scientific match, so I was going to go easy on him. But now I can say what I really think about King Kong Bundy. You know what I think about him, Lance? I think he's fat. Do you people think he's fat? How, how fat is King Kong Bundy? You know, I want to tell you how fat he is. King Kong Bundy is so fat, I'll never forget the days he was born. March 17th, 18th, and 19th. He was fat. He was a fat baby. Let me tell you about King Kong Bundy. He was so fat when he was a little kid, he had to mump for three weeks before anybody realized it. Do you know how fat Bundy is? Hey, he was so fat when he was a kid, his parents wouldn't let him go swimming. They were afraid he'd get harpooned. Now that's fat, man. Now that's fat. I want to tell you how fat that Bundy is, brother. He couldn't go swimming, but the beach was his favorite place. You know why? People used to pay him to sit in the shade. That's how fat King Kong Bundy is. I want to tell you, he's fat. He gets fan mail from elephants. Let me tell you something, Bundy. I know how to beat you. I knock you down, and you're so fat, you'll rock yourself to sleep trying to get up. Let me tell you something, Bundy. You come to Memphis. You bring Jimmy Hart, because Monday night, brother, I'm ready, and I'm going to leave you a big fat grease butt right in the middle of that Memphis ring. Get him. I feel better already. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's fat, and this man's got his head right on right. We saw it when it got screwed on about three weeks ago, and King Kong Bundy, bring it in. Here's a guy that's looking for you. We're going to be back in just a moment.
down at the Coliseum last week, uh, Evelyn Stevens, and they went against Rick Rude and Angel, Angel's first time in the ring as a wrestler. And uh, uh, in this particular case, it was not the normal mixed tag match where the ladies have to tag in when a lady tags right. in. It was just tag match. That's all there was to it. Reg yeah, regular yeah. tag rules. Just same yeah. regular tag rules. Now, they got one coming up Monday night that I love because this is even going to spur Dutch on because I know he feels the same way I do about it. We've talked about the thing. He's going to be wrestling rude. And if he beats rude, then Evelyn Stevens, who will be in his corner, it's five big ones with Angel in there in the ring. Right now, share with me the interest of this doggone match with Dutch and Evelyn uh, going against Rick Rude and Angel. Ties it up with Mantel. Here's a whip. Dutch popped into the turnbuckle. Rude follows, bangs that shoulder against the top turnbuckle, and Dutch goes right for the arm bar, right up at that shoulder. Plants a foot right in the midsection. There's a tag, and Rude says, get in there. Oh, boy, this is what your crowd's been waiting on. What is this? Rude said, keep her out. Angel coming up. Dutch just standing there looking at her. She pushes him a little. Dutch wants to haul off and just knock her right out of her shoes. But he tags Evelyn. Angel back in the corner under the protective wing of Rick Rude. Here comes Rude in. Evelyn Stevens, no dummy herself. She backs up and says, hey, get Angel in there. Dutch says, uh, another tag on Evelyn. away. 
comes Evelyn Stevens and she's gonna bust her one. Introducing from Memphis, Tennessee, at 216 pounds. Over on the right of the screen, Jim Jamison. Going against him from parts unknown. At 242 pounds, the spoiler. One fall, 15-minute time limit match. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. We have a... Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll ring the bell and then we'll get through telling you. Bill, Bill Hickerson. Hickerson. Get out of the way, get out of the way. Everybody wants to be know where Phil Hickerson is. Ben, Lance. Yep, yep. Everybody wants to know where I've been. Let me tell you something. I've been in Jackson, Tennessee. I went out and I bought me one of the biggest nightclubs in Jackson, Tennessee. The water hole. <laughs> Just teasing, guys. Just teasing. Now, you don't want to know, that's where I've been. Now, what else you want to know? You know, I come out here and watch this because, you know, I know the spoiler personally. Yeah, I know. You know, I've worked out with him before. I know. Look at him. That is the greatest thing that's right there. Right now, he's just beating the stew out of Jim Jamison hey, up there. Is don't the sport. call it what you want to call it, brother. But what the man is, he's like myself. He's out to do one thing: is to win. Man, is to win. That's yeah. what makes it, is to win. That was beautiful. I love it. I can I love see it. you've still got that same marvelous, oh, yeah, mellow man. attitude you had when you I've were. I've always been Dennis like I've been, right? Yeah. You like me, don't you? Oh, I love you. Oh, too. yes, sir. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, great. Good to Fantastic. Spoiler up Spoiler there. Do it. You got it. You got it. Beat Jim him to Jamison. death. He is outside Woo! by a bunch of the spoilers. What do you mean outside? Everybody. Hey, the kid's good. I admire him. I admire him. Ooh. Jamison down on his face. Phil. Why don't he just lay down? Well, we, just quit. we haven't seen Phil here with us in uh, quite some time. Well, brother, I'm back. I'm back. You know what I can't understand? I sit back and see TV and I watch all these wrestlers. I've been retired for three years, brother. I've been retired for three years, and I'm in better shape than half the wrestlers in this territory right now. You know that? 
I've been at it for three years, and I'm in better shape than anybody. We're going to find out That's right. You're going to find out. You're going to see exactly what feeling. I know. I am great. You know, I, in my 35 years of living, I have run across some stupid and illiterate people. But you know who the most stupid people are? Who is Eddie Marlin. Because, you know, I was ramrod in town in a tag team, right? I was dominating the tag team business. And here it is. That's it. Big oh, suplex. If that boy, yeah, if he gets up, he's going to do funny things. I'll guarantee you. Yeah. Fantastic. He didn't get up. That's right. He's Boiler not going to get up. Comes through with a victory. And Bill Hickerson back over here. We hadn't seen him. Goes over and gives a big five to the Spurs. He walks out of here with a uh, victory over Jim Jamison. Jim took quite a uh, pounding right in there. Uh, what was the time on that? Time on it was two minutes, 12 seconds. Two, two minutes, 12, 12 seconds. <laughs> he didn't get an opportunity to do much commentary with <laughs> Hickerson in there. <laughs> running his mouth off. Okay. The Dutchman. I got a lot to talk about today, and I don't have a long time to say it in. Now, you know, it's no big secret, me and Rick Rude. We don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. I think that's true. And Rude, he can't do nothing right. I had Scott Shannon here. He's got to have that little girl, that little angel, that little blonde-headed little witch. He's got to hop in there and do everything. Well, I got an answer for her. If I win the match with Rude, wait a minute, wait hey, a minute. Hey, hey, wait hey, now, a come on, Whoa, Dutch just interview Daddy. out here, Angel. Yeah, wait a minute. I'm talking with Dutch. What? I need to talk to you. What? I need to talk to wait you. Wait a home. minute. Wait a minute. Nope. Hey, come on now. We don't. We, we had enough problem out here with Rude and everything. I have a lot of things on my mind. It's coming straight from my heart, and I want you to. I need you desperately to hear me out. Okay? Do you yeah. What? I need you to hear me wait out. Wait a minute. No, no. You stay over there, darling. I'll stay right here. Okay? I know you're a little leery of me. I've caused you a little hassles in the past. Yeah, like hit him with look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. See the honesty? See it? Oh. Come on. I'm being honest with you. Wait a minute now. I'm sincere. Really. What, what, do you want, what do you want me for? Listen. Put, get your hands off of me, Angel, please. I've heard what you've said about Rick, and it's all true. He's a mean, cruel, ruthless man. It doesn't uh. stop with you. It doesn't stop with you wrestling. You hear this? the same way towards me. He shows no mercy on me, Dutch. No. no. At the end of our match today, he hey, was that's shaking your, me. That's your problem, Angel. That's not my problem. Listen, that's true. He, he almost threw me out of the ring. He wouldn't have cared if he broke my bones. I'm scared. I'm shaking in my shoes. He's got me living in fear, and I'm tired of and it. What do you want me to do about it? I've got a proposition for you. Dutch, I need you. I need you desperately, like I've never needed anyone. Listen, you don't need me, no. Listen, you're masculine, you're courageous, and you're just what I need to protect me from this monster. I need you, Dutch. I really no, do. Please I'm have some compassion for me. I'm not sure Dutch is going for all of this right now. Angel. What are you doing? Hey, come on now. What I'm trying to tell you, I need you. Won't you have a little compassion? Jeez. Oh, I'll tell you what. Hey, come on now. Would you come out here? And... Easier than we thought, fool. All right, hey, Rude, come on. Get out. Jeez, he busted him with that waste. Right over there. Dutch. <laughs> Night. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you, Jerry. We're gonna uh, we're gonna take a break right now and we'll be back. You see the, the chick come out here and Superstar. Bill Hickerson uh, with a comment talking about his partner Pat Hutchinson you see right there. Fabulous one climb up on the other side. It's going to be a match to the expiration of time at 457 pounds total weight from Memphis, Tennessee. Pat Hutchinson from Jackson, Tennessee. Phil Hickerson and going against him at a total of 434 pounds from Hendersonville and Lexington, Tennessee. The fabulous ones, Tommy Rich and Eddie Gilbert. This match for the expiration of time, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. 
Waiting for the signal from the referee to get the match underway. And we'll sound the bell. And here we go. Bill Hickerson telling his partner, Pat Hutchinson, you watch this. He came over before, uh, before they climbed up on the ring apron and said, Bill says he's going to make Pat a superstar. Tommy Rich for the fabulous ones. Max Hickerson back on the rope. I think most of you wrestling fans remember Phil Hickerson from uh, days gone by. If you don't, he's one of the most vicious wrestlers ever to come through these parts here. Yeah, he's right about one thing. The name Hickerson has probably uh, sent terror through the entire tag team rank for a long time. Well, they sure did. The Bulldogs, they called themselves. Hickson, watch yeah, him. yeah. Hickson, tell it, Pat Hutchinson, you just watch me. Thought maybe it mellowed a little bit, but not a bit of it. Mm -mm. Look at Wildfire go with that hip toss. Hickson, tell it, Hutchinson, that's all right. Yeah, got him under control, he says. <laughs> I don't know, I wonder if Phil has seen the fabulous one. Wildfire gets his hair pulled, yanked down to the mat, the referee breaks that hold. He's telling Hickerson, uh-uh, I saw that hair pulling. And you're not gonna get a hold to make it stick that way. Tommy Rich. Just kind of waiting. Phil Hickerson better watch him, what he better is. Yeah, he told Pat Hutchins to watch me, don't watch him. We're coming up on the two-minute mark. Bill Hickerson with the headlock. Hickerson said, all right, you've seen how I'm doing it? Grab that headlock, can you do it? Hutchinson says, yeah. Look, Phil, look, look what's happened, Phil. Wildfire Tommy Rich reversed Pat uh, Hutchinson uh, with, with no problem on the headlock. Makes the tag for the fabulous one. And here comes Eddie Gilbert. Eddie Gilbert bars the arm. Pat Hutchinson on his knees. Eddie's brother's still down at ringside shooting pictures. He has a lot of uh, interest in photography. And Eddie did, too, was a, a journalist himself. I think Eddie still, still writes some. Doug is down there shooting pictures of Eddie in with Big Phil Hickerson. Hickerson trying to take control of the match again. Doing a pretty good job of it against Eddie. That's Eddie Gilbert. Hickerson. That arm bent. Three minutes, 15 seconds gone. Air pulling. Hickerson yanked him down to the mat. Has to give up the hole, but he broke it quickly and right back on an arm bar. You see how it's on your son? Before you get the high out to it. Hickerson talking to Pat Hutchinson again. He's going to tag Pat Hutchinson. Hutchinson grabbing the arm bar. Uh, 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 Pat was just body slammed. Fabulous ones make a tag. Wildfire, Tommy Rich. Has Pat Hutchinson down on the mat. Bill Hickerson yelling at Hutchinson from the corner. You move around. How do you move around when you got Tommy Rich <laughs> hanging right on to you and bending that arm halfway off? He does make his way under the ropes. Hole breaking. No, uh, hole broken. Got about five minutes in our expiration of time, uh, Dave, so still plenty of time to go. Watch what I do. Bill Hickerson, the uh, wrestling teacher again, as he's telling Pat Hutchinson, pay attention to this. He's 
Tommy Rich. Eddie Gilbert, the fabulous ones, just, just kind of playing it cool here. They're letting, uh, letting Hickerson uh, give his instructions to his partner. Tommy Rich just grabbed him in the headlock. There was pulled again, but Tommy landed on his feet and says, come on. You want to do it that way, we'll do it that way. Tommy waiting out there for him. Step on out and tell him yeah, to keep out of my hair. Four minutes. Less interesting time. Rich the top wrist lock on Phil Hickerson. Eddie Gilbert takes over with that top wrist lock. And he's keeping Nicholson forced back near the fabulous one's corner. Nicholson has to figure a way out of this. And he does it with hair pulling. Yeah, he has figured it out. Well, that'll break a hold though. It is cool. Upper arm coming off the ropes. Eddie Gilbert hits the mat hard. Hickerson makes the tag on Pat Hutchinson. Hutchinson comes in with a double fist. Now right hand, double fist Ooh. across the back of the neck. Eddie nails and tags Tommy Rich, and here comes Wildfire with the upper arm. Look out for Hickerson. Uh oh, look out off the corner. I think you can see Hickerson wrapping something, which is a chain. We can see it from here, wrapped around that right fist. Tommy Rich. Working on Hutchinson, he's got him on the mat. Checking the corner. Tommy can't see what uh, Hickerson has done over here. He just sees Hickerson back in the corner. There, a terrific shot of it. You can see that right hand. Look out. Hickerson starts in, he's sent back out by the referee, but now he kneels, Tommy. Right fist. That was one, two, two count. The two count was on Tommy Rich. Eddie Gilbert going after Phil. Hutchinson hooked down. And the fabulous ones get the win in spite of Phil Hickerson and his chain. Tommy, Eddie. Little pose for Eddie's brother there with the, uh, with the camera after the victory. Seven minutes, six seconds. What a first fall. I will have to check time here in a moment and see how we stack up for getting the second fall started. And now Hickerson is saying to Hutchinson, what happened? I had him set up for you. I hit him with a chain. I don't know if he's telling him that, but that's what happened. That's what he did. He dude. sure did. But in spite of it, they got it, uh, it didn't work out. Oh, look out. Hickerson, with a right fist, hits his partner and knocks him down. I don't think they have much longevity as a tag team in there. No, I don't think. A, oh, hey, come, well, on, come on, Phil. Phil. Hey, now that's good. Oh, All right, Phil. Now come on. Oh, my God, it's like a spoiler and rude out here. All of them jumping Tommy Rich. Tommy trying to, and Eddie trying to help out Eddie's brother. Hickerson grabbed his pin. Rude, beating on uh, Tommy Rich over here. Spoiler takes the camera, smashing it. Yeah, you're great. Why don't you just get out of here? Listen, we're going to take a break and we're going to be back here in just a minute. 